In the forsaken cul-de-sac of Eldridge Lane, at its very end, stood a house that everyone in town whispered about but never approached. The locals, with hushed tones and wary eyes, called it the Doll House. It was a tired old structure, its brick facade consumed by creeping vines and ivy, making it seem as if the earth itself was trying to reclaim it. Dolls, with empty gazes and cracked porcelain, hung ominously in the windows, swaying gently with the wind as if nodding to unseen spectators. Nobody dared to venture into the dollhouse. The rumors of its cursed past and the eerie occurrences that surrounded it were enough to keep even the most curious at bay. But not us, not me and my friends. We were a brave or perhaps foolish bunch, hungry for adventure and dismissive of the old wives' tales. So, one night, driven by the reckless spirit of youth, we decided to unveil the mystery of the dollhouse ourselves. The night was pitch black, the only light provided by the sliver of the moon and our flickering flashlights as we made our way to the infamous house. The air was heavy with an unspoken dread, and the closer we got, the more the house seemed to loom over us, its silhouette a grotesque shadow against the night sky. The front door groaned in protest as we pushed it open, revealing a world untouched by time. The interior was a maze of hallways and rooms, each one more decrepit than the last. The drywall was peeling, the wallpaper was faded and torn, and the air was thick with the smell of mold and decay. Our footsteps echoed through the empty halls, disturbing the silence that had long reigned over the house. We explored room after room, our flashlights casting long shadows that danced along with the hanging dolls. The house's layout was choppy and nonsensical, with staircases leading nowhere and doors that opened to brick walls. It was as if the house itself was alive, shifting and changing to disorient use. As we delve it deeper, we hear a sound that stopped us in our tracks, a faint, rhythmic thumping coming from the basement. Fear gripped Eus, and most of the group wanted to turn back, but I, feeling a sense of responsibility and an insatiable curiosity, convinced them to continue. We approached the basement door, the thumping growing louder with each step. The basement was cold and damp, the air stale with the scent of earth and something else, something sinister. The walls were covered in writing, phrases, and symbols that made no sense, yet filled us with an unexplainable dread. And then we saw it, across the room, a door glowing with an otherworldly light. Drawn like moths to a flame, we moved closer, our every instinct screaming at us to flee, but our bodies unwilling to obey. As we opened the door, we were met with an empty, vast world, a void filled with shadows of all shapes and sizes. They were screaming, their cries a cacophony of despair and anger, flying around in a frenzied dance of freedom. We tried to close the door, to undo what we had done, but it was too late. The shadows burst through, dozens of them, screaming as they flew into our world. We ducked and covered our heads, waiting for the nightmare to end. When the last of the shadows had flown out, we slowly got up, our bodies shaking, our minds unable to comprehend what had just happened. That's when we saw him, a man, or something that once was a man, standing at the far end of the basement, a wide, unsettling grin spread across his face. You freed them, he said, his voice a whisper that echoed through the hollow space, his grin growing wider. We didn't wait around to hear anything else. We ran as fast as we could, out of the basement, out of the house, not stopping until we were safely back under the night sky. But the world we returned to was not the same. The shadows were everywhere, screaming and rejoicing, spreading their dread across the land. As we looked up at the sky, now streaked with their dark forms, we realized the gravity of what we had done. A profound sense of dread fell upon us, knowing that our folly had changed the world forever. The dollhouse stood silent once more, its secrets once again hidden within its decaying walls. But it was no longer just a house, it was a gateway, a reminder of the night when curiosity and bravado led to unspeakable horror. And as for me, I'm left with the memories, the guilt, and the unshakable feeling that the eyes of those dolls had watched it all unfold, their expressions unchanged, yet somehow more sinister than ever before. <laughs>